Tonight was an opportunity for an AFC East to make a statement. One team did, and one team certainly did not. Hey folks, welcome bottom line viewers. Probably a Friday morning review of your Thursday night recap game between the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago when the New England Patriots were playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to Mitch that a window, a very small crack, opened for the Buffalo Bills to be in a conversation to be one of the top teams in the AFC East. Not better than the Patriots, of course, we're not saying that, but at least in a conversation. What happened? That week they walked into, they played Cincinnati, they were on to Cincinnati, ironically, and they shot themselves in the foot. Tonight was that another opportunity to break in a little bit to that window of the AFC conversation, the AFC East conversation specifically. The Buffalo Bills came into this game 5-2, and two, tied with New England Patriots. People were actually quite impressed with the Buffalo Bills. What happened? Well, thanks to a couple of garbage touchdowns, this game looked a lot better than it actually was. The New York Jets knocked off the Buffalo Bills 34-21, to and... It, this game was not as close as the score led you to believe. Let's first go over the statistical summary of this game. And uh, let's start here on first quarter. Josh McCown runs for 10 yards for a touchdown. Don't see a lot of that from Josh McCown, but he did that there. Scrambled very well. First quarter ends, 7 nothing Jets. And then early second quarter, basically the first play of the second quarter, Tyrod Taylor hits Zay Jones for 10 yards for a touchdown. Tony Romo said that was Zay Jones' best route of the year. Uh, it's going to be interesting with the Bills. You have Zay Jones, you have Jordan Matthews, you have uh, Calvin Benjamin coming in. They look like they have a pretty quality receiver core. But uh, we'll talk about them a little bit more as we get on to this. Uh, a little bit later on in the quarter, uh, Chandler Cat Catanazero kicks a 45-yard field goal. We end in the half, the Jets leading the Bills 10-7. Then this game turned. It was like a boxing match, and the New York Jets took their right fist, and they punched the Buffalo Bills right in the mouth and ended this, pretty much. We have the uh, Josh McCown hit Robbie Anderson for 25 yards. Beautiful catch, throw and catch. Um, Anderson was able to keep both feet in bounds and hold on to the ball there. You can see that in a number of different uh, replays there. That was pretty clear what happened there. The Jets increased their lead to 17-7. to Then, a little bit later, Chandler Catanazero hits a field goal, making it, or sorry, a 17-7, no field goal. Matt Forte, who had a big game, hits a 10 yards run for a touchdown. We end the third quarter going 24-7. Then, basically, it was turnover fest for the uh, Buffalo Bills. Uh, the New York Jets were all over them. I think Tyrod Taylor was wearing green for most of this game. I'm not convinced, but uh, they Big turnover. Matt Forte says, thank you very much, defense. I'm going to run up the middle and for five yards for a touchdown. 31-7 to early in the uh, fourth quarter. And then we had the dark garbage time. Tyrod Taylor hits Deontay Thompson for 26-yard touchdown. They do recover the on onside kick and drive it down the field again. Tyrod Taylor hits a uh, quarterback sneak. Final score, Jets 34, Bills 21. Now, I know that I sometimes say some really ridiculous things that some of you are left shaking your head. So I'm just going to warn you that I am about to say something that may be ridiculous that may have you shaking your head. And that is this. Todd Bowles should be in consideration for some to be coach of the year. Our own Dylan Villa did a video if the New York Jets were going to go 0-16. Our friend, that looks a lot like me, by the way, the priest, and announced the end of the burial of the New York Jets season at the beginning of the year. And here they are at 4-5. and five. I quite frankly think that they come out of this game looking like they're the second best team in the AFC East. And I'm going to say it. They have a 35% chance getting into the playoffs. I'm not saying they are getting in. We'll talk about their schedule a little bit later, but it's nationally 
you look at everything else that's going on here. Let's look at um, the AFC West as an example. The Denver Broncos quarterback situation is a hot mess. They're going back to a guy that the Houston Texans are paying to stay away from their roster. The Oakland Raiders are a mess. They're dysfunctional. And the Bills beat them badly last week. Um, Deshaun Watson's up for the year. That's very sad. The Tennessee Titans are not consistent. And we... And the Jacksonville Jaguars are defense with no offense. The Buffalo Bills took a huge step back here. The Jets are in this playoff conversation. I know that that sounds ridiculous for me to say, but look at the, the record and the standings. They're in there. I'm not saying they're getting in. I say they have a 35% chance of getting in. We'll talk about that with their schedule. But first, let's go to the stats. And, of course, we have to start with the winning team, the New York Jets. And as we pull up the stats here, we go down on the little computer here. Uh, let's go to first the team stat comparison. First down to Jets over the Bill had 21 first downs of so the Bills, 20. Six by passing, 10 by rushing, uh, five by third for penalty. Jets were 6 for 14 on third down. The Bills were 7 for 17. Total plays, actually, Bills had 69. The Jets had 62. But the key stat in this game, 194 yards rushing to 63 for the Buffalo Bills. That's usually the other way around. Um, the Jets basically outbuild the Bills in this game when we look at that three rushing touchdowns, as we know. And 33 minutes and 30 seconds, time of possession over for the New York Jets. Stewart's going through the stats here. Josh McCown didn't have, have to do a lot to win this game, but he did enough. He was 14 for 20 for 120, one, sorry, 140 yards and a touchdown of Robbie Anderson. Um, efficient, uh, effective, had a nice throw to Robbie Anderson, had a nice throw to Arterius Severus Jenkins, he used Jermaine Curse. That Anderson Curse combination, Jenkins, is not a bad combination when you really look at it. They're not the best, but. They are getting the job done. I think that I would suspect that Jets would think they would need some more consistency from Jermaine Curse, but he's doing a pretty good job. What the story of this game was is the three-headed monster known as the Jets running game. Matt Forte, who old man probably would be saying would be part of the R-E-T-I-R E club, retire, came back. I think he brought a couple of new legs and he found them today. 14 carries, 77 yards, two touchdowns, a long of 20. He was hard to take down, and so was Bilal Powell. Nine carries, 74 yards. He had a 51-yard long with an 8.2 average. The New York Jets offensive line was pushing this Bills off the defensive line off the map. Uh, it was something else. And then they had McGuire come in and have 13 carries for 30 yards himself. Not great, but he got enough first downs to be able to control the clock in the fourth quarter. Receiving-wise, well, not great, but you didn't have to because you were able to run the ball. Four catches for 48 yards for Robbie Anderson, two for 38 for Jermaine Kurz, and then you had Arteris Safari, the guy with the long name, Safarius Jenkins, two catches for 20 yards. Matt Forte out of the backfield, four for 19, so 96 yards total today for Matt Forte. So all in all, an effective game on offense. They were The Jets' defense was able to create some turnovers, uh, which helped, and some sacks. One, two, two and a half, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, seven sacks for the New York Jets. What a game. Um, Hallwood Wilkinson was all over the place. Uh, you had Roberts in there, corner play pretty good. Williams was in there. Uh, De 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 Demario Davis had the big fumble recovery late in the fourth. Um, just all over the place, all over the place. They dominated that, uh, the line of scrimmage on both ends, specifically defensively, uh, able to create turnovers, shorten the field for the New York Jets offense, and they were able, the Jets offense was able to capitalize. Yeah, Muhammad Wilkerson, big game. Davis, big game. Williams, big game. Um, all in all, I think a very strong game for a pass rush that hasn't had a great season overall, but it did its job today. It came to play today. Uh, so for overall for the New York Jets, I think you can come away with this thinking you've, you're getting an improving defense. You play really well at home, and 
not bad for you, a good effort today. And those two touchdowns were really, this game, quite frankly, I think if we can sum it up, was a 34-7 to game for the New York Jets with two late touchdowns. Let's look at the Buffalo Bills stats here. And again, they look a little bit better than they probably are. But one of the things that I don't think the Buffalo Bills want is a Tyrod Taylor throwing 29 for 40 for 285 yards. Not that the 29 is bad. Not that the 285 is bad. This guy had to throw 40 passes. They would rather have 40 runs and 40 passes. That's the way that they play. Um, but Tyrod Taylor was able to get out of the pocket in a couple of positions. He he did okay, um, but he was wearing a lot of green. Um, he, he was in a lot of trouble. Um, we'll get into the, some of the receiving core there, but um, he, he did what he could considering that there was a lot of gangrene on him. Uh, but I don't think you want Tyrod Taylor in a position to be throwing 40 passes. What you would rather have is LaShawn McKellie, who had a tough night. 12 carries, 25 yards. Uh, he, he did have the one great run that he ran to the right on. That was nice, but other than that, he had a tough game. The leading rusher for the Bills was Tyrod Taylor, six rushes for 35. He ran in for that quarterback sneak. He also had the fumble as well. Um, so not a great day for Taylor, but especially not a great day for LaShawn McCoy. Uh, Receiving-wise, uh, Thompson had seven catches for 81 yards with the late touchdown. Zay Jones got the tying touchdown, six catches for 53. Nick O'Leary, four catches, 51 yards, and an inexplicable, confusing, I don't understand what you're doing, fumble. He wasn't touched, he stands up, he looks around, and then he fumbles the ball. Anyway, and the Jets were able to recover. It feels like the Bills got a bill there, don't you? Um, just a tough, tough day for him. He didn't have a great day. I think a lot of people came in with higher expectations of Nick O'Leary, and I don't think he filled those very well. Team is missing Charles Clay for sure. Um... And so overall, tough day for the Buffalo Bills offensively, and uh, they're not the way that they want to play. They would rather run the ball. They would rather be in a ball control game, and they had to pass, which was not their strength, although it's going to be interesting to see how the receivers play going forward. Uh, defensively, this wasn't a, a great day for them. Um Micah Hyde had four tackles, but he missed one of those tackles, the big 51-yard rush. That was because of Micah Hyde actually getting, missing, a completely missing a tackle. He was able to recover and make a tackle, but um, he, he, uh, he didn't have a great game. Uh, Poyer was the leading tackler with six. No sacks for the Bills. No, sorry, that's not true. One sack for the Bills from Thornton. No interceptions. They weren't able to create any turnovers. And they let the Buffalo, the New York Jets run all over them. And that is very concerning going forward. This is a team that needs to win the line of scrimmage to be successful. This is, I think, the way that they want to design their club. And tonight was not that night for sure. Uh, Brown had a, had a good game. Uh, two stuffs, three assists, two tackles for losses. But overall, I don't think that this is one of the games that the Bills are going to go home and applaud themselves for. Uh, so let's look here at the schedule. and Let's start with the Buffalo Bills because they're, they're down to 5-3. and three. And yes, they are in the playoff conversation. But as I mentioned when we did the NFL preview, uh, Mitch was a bigger, bigger believer than I was that the Bills were going to be a playoff team. I had some reservations. And um, I... Think that I my reservations after today were justified, but as we look at the Bills' schedule here uh, going forward, they got the Saints next week. That's not it is at home. Uh, the Saints are on a roll right now, so I think that's going to be tough. But it gets tougher going forward. They're off to San Diego the week after that. That's or sorry, L.A. I forgot. It's L.A., not San Diego. Sorry about that. It should be in San Diego, but that's not an easy game. Kansas City, not an easy game. Then you got New England coming uh, home. Your schedule gets a bit easier after that. Those These next four games, the Saints, the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Patriots, that's going to be a telltale sign of where this built team is heading into the final four games of December. And 
It's not unreasonable to me to see that they're going to go, they could go 0 and 4, which would lead them to 5 and 7. And I think in a very difficult position to get into the playoffs this year. So uh, uh, that's a concern. But the New York Jets going forward here, this is an interesting schedule in that there is some winnable games here as we pull up the New York Jets schedule. Um, oops, not that one. Sorry. New York Jets schedule here. Uh, here, Here's where I think that they are uh, going to be okay. I think they got a winnable game next week in Tampa Bay. I think um, early picks, I will pick them, to, can pick them to win. The Buccaneers are not playing well. They are one of my disappointments. Then they have a bye. Then they have Carolina at home. They play well at home. They are a tough team to beat at home. Um, I mean, they're beatable at home, but they're, you know, they, they keep it in there. And I think, not sure where Carolina is at this point in time. So um, that's a winnable game. Kansas City is going to be tough, tough, but they then go to Denver. You know what? I don't think that Denver's would be that much of a favorite. You look at that, that quarterback situation is such a hot mess. Uh, so that is a potential winning game. Then you got the end of the season. You got the Saints, the, and then the Chargers at home, and then the Patriots. The winnable games to me are the Bucks, the Panthers, and the Broncos. I think that they can win those three games, and if they do win those three games and pull one miracle off, which is the Chiefs, the Saints, the Chargers, and the Patriots, that gives them eight and eight. That they may have to pull off two, but eight and eight for the New York Jets, considering where they started this season. And where we had, that's that's almost a priest would clarify that as a miracle. Nine and seven, nine and seven is an outside shot for the AFC to get into the playoffs. Here, they're going to need some help for sure, and that's why I say thirty-five percent, and maybe that's a little high. But kudos to the New York Jets. They actually, I really think they punched the Buffalo Bills in the mouth. They made a state. They were the team that made the statement tonight. They are the second best team in the AFC East. They are coming up here. They have, you know, I mean, they're a little old in a couple of positions, but they don't seem to want to give up, which is, and they're playing with a lot of passion and heart, and they're having a lot of fun, and they have a better record than the New York Giants. Who would have thought of that? Um, that's very interesting as well. So that's our recap of Thursday Night Football. The New York Jets again knock off the Buffalo Bills 34-21. to If you like this video, like and subscribe to some of the other stuff that we do on the bottom line view. we got some great stuff coming up here. We've got uh, Mitch. He's going to do his start and start him at sit him later on this weekend. Uh, I think Mitch and AC are going to do a betting show. I bet you they do. I don't know. Haha, <laughs> get it? Thanks, I'm here all week. And we've got Sunday AM with Dylan and Mitch and myself. And then we recap the Sunday night game, which will be a snooze fest, but we'll probably have lots of other games to talk about Sunday night as Dylan's Dallas Cowboys host the Kansas City Chiefs and my Seattle Seahawks host Kirk Cousins and the Washington Redskins. And Mitch has nothing to worry about. And AC has the Eagles playing the Broncos. So, but if you like this video, like and subscribe to more of our NFL content. It's Kevo with the bottom line view. Again, final score for Thursday Night Football, the New York Jets 34, the Buffalo Bills 21. Thanks for watching. We will talk to you soon.